People often think evolution is just a series of new traits and features being stacked one after the other on top of a new creature as they move up the evolutionary ladder. But sometimes that isn't always the case. Occasionally a trait or feature is deselected from an animal and a new species is formed that seems to be a bit lacking but is in many cases more adept at surviving in a certain situation. Researchers from the University of Tübingen in Germany were able to conduct an experiment which showed how these evolutionary changes can happen very quickly. Now what they did was they took a group of baby snails and they exposed them to platinum. Now when they were exposed to platinum the genes inside them which were responsible for producing a shell wouldn't be activated and suddenly these snails became slugs. Now anyone who's played the Pokemon games will probably have already made this connection but it's kinda like when you expose a Pikachu to a Thunderstone and it becomes a Raichu. Although this is actually reality. Now this experiment doesn't necessarily mean that snails all turned into slugs. It's actually a little more complicated than that. There's a lot of back and forth between these various invertebrates. But it does show that a profound structural change, the loss of a shell in this case, can happen very quickly. All it takes is one gene not to be activated. And of course it doesn't mean that the reason we have slugs is because snails started playing around platinum. It's just a, uh, an experimental effect that's designed to show how quickly evolution can work sometimes. But if you're wondering, are, are there any cases where um, an animal lost a feature of some sort and became something new and different? Of course there are many, but perhaps one of the most famous is the one in which whales, which were land mammals, originally lost their legs when they moved back into the ocean. Now to fully explain why whales lost their legs. First you have to know that there's a gene called the Sonic Hedgehog gene and yes it was named after the video game character. It's actually a group of three genes that are called hedgehogs and the Sonic one was discovered last and I suppose the scientist who discovered it uh, was just a big fan of Sonic. Now this is the Mycetes inus which is a species that predates the whales we know today and basically it was a amphibious mammal so it lived on the land and in the water although probably originated as a, a land mammal first I believe and as it grew to live in the water more frequently the sonic hedgehog gene began to be triggered less and less or I should rephrase that if that particular gene was not triggered it would actually be an advantage of sorts not having any legs would make it a lot easier for it to swim. So, when a certain mutation would cause that gene not to trigger, or trigger at a smaller rate, the Mycetes inus would gradually lose its legs. They would actually get smaller and smaller. They wouldn't recede, they just become tinier versions of themselves. So when these genes are rarely active, you have right here a modern whale. So what once were legs are now just a few small bones. In this case, it's sort of a uh, pelvis and femur, which aren't even connected to the spinal cord. They're just kind of floating inside the whale there, not really doing much of anything. And you'd be surprised at how many species have this same problem. There are lots of vestigial remains, even in humans and they only seem to be in there to prove that evolution is true or as Darwin put it they are the stamp of our lowly origins now bringing this back to humans it might be that a gene not activating is responsible for our large brains there's actually a very interesting hypothesis out there that since as this gene that's responsible for the formation of our jaws doesn't activate entirely that is to say, our jaws should actually have um, bones that go all the way around our heads and fuse at the very top. Our jaws don't do that, they kind of stop part of the way up. And because of that, we don't have quite the bite strength of other primates. However, since we don't have that really hard, stiff bone in our heads, that's given our brain 
uh, a chance to grow and expand more than it would be if there was this very hard bone preventing growth. And because of that, we have these nice big brains. Of course, that's just a hypothesis. It's, uh, it's a relatively new one, but it's still interesting nonetheless. And it shows how sometimes genes not activating are some of the best evolutionary advantages of all.